the burns still burn. <laughs> it's still hot and um, it's still sweaty, it's dirty, it's, it's sometimes frustrating. All the reasons Joel Tripp treasures this age-old art of manipulating steel. For the better part of three decades, he's forged a living essentially in the exact same manner so many blacksmiths did decades before him. Most of the heat's right in, in here. Everything we make is real max blacksmithing. I make my own hammers, I make my own tongs, I make all my own tools. No different than they would have a hundred years ago. Flanked by his longtime assistant, in this business, when the fire is roaring, four hands are always better than two. And when the steel is glowing red hot, the timing from heat to hammer must be precise. How hot are we talking right here? 2,600 degrees. Good blacksmith doesn't leave hammer marks, but you can tell the difference when it's handmade with a hammer versus machine made. Joel quips he never has too many irons in the fire. Focusing his work on producing a limited number of historic hand tools and equipment like this ox chain. His customers, people who appreciate the artistry. Customers want to know that what I'm making is handmade by me. They want the authenticity to know that, that a craftsman has put their time into it. Sometimes it's just a look or a texture or a feel to the product. But this is actually a piece of old saw blade. One of just a handful of blacksmiths left in Maine, Joel is constantly looking to pass on his skills. When not here inside his own shop, good chance you'll find him somewhere teaching his craft or hosting demonstrations. I have so much fun, I can't understand why everybody else doesn't want to be a blacksmith. I want to put it into right about there. It's hot, filthy, and with one wrong whack of the hammer, can ruin an hour's worth of work. But ask Joel Tripp, it's the coolest job in the world. You get absorbed in the work and you don't think about anything else. Everything else disappears.